Hello and welcome to the second video on algebraic fractions. In this video we're going to be looking at equivalence and simplifying algebraic fractions. So to create an equivalent fraction, all we need to do here is to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same letter or number. So exactly what we did for numerical fractions. So if we look first of all at a numerical example, we could pick any number, let's say 4, and multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 4. This would give us the equivalent fraction of 4 over 8. Again, you could pick a different number. Let's say we take the number 6 this time. We could multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 6, which would give us 6 over 12. These two fractions are equivalent to a half. This works in the exact same way for algebraic fractions. So we can take any letter or any number and multiply the numerator and the denominator by it. So if we were to take the number 2, for example, if we have x times 2, that leaves us with 2x. If we have 2 times 2, we have 4. So 2x over 4 is equivalent to x over 2. If you decided you didn't want to take a letter, but you wanted to take, so you didn't want to take a number, but you wanted to take a letter, let's multiply the numerator and the denominator by y. That would give us xy on the numerator over 2y. Again, this fraction is equivalent to x over 2. If you have at the fraction 1 over x plus 3, again, you can take any letter or any number to multiply by. Let's take the number 4, multiply the numerator and the denominator. So that would give us 4 over 4x plus 12, which is an equivalent fraction. Or if we take a letter, let's take the letter y again. That would give us the, the fraction y over xy plus 3y. Take some time now to pause the video and copy this into your notes jotter. Okay. Similarly, if you wanted to simplify an algebraic fraction, we need to find the highest common factor of both the numerator and the denominator, like what we did for numerical fractions. We can only simplify when the terms can be written as a product of factors. So for example, if we have x cubed, that can be broken up into a product of factors to say x times x times x. If we had z plus 1 all to the power of 4, this can be written as z plus 1 times z plus 1 times z plus 1 times z plus 1. Again, a product of factors. If we have x to the power of 4, y to the power of 2, this is the same as x times x times x times x times y times y. That can be written as a product of factors. Again, take some time just now to write this into your notes, Jota. Okay, so here is an example, both a numerical example and an algebraic example. So if we were wanting to simplify the fraction 16 over 32, what we'd be looking for is the highest common factor of both of those numbers. Okay, and what you should identify is that the highest common factor here is 16. So both of these numbers here can be divided by 16. That would leave you with 1 over 2. So in its simplest form, 16 over 32 is 1 half. The same goes for the algebraic example. We have xy to the power of 3 over 2y. This xy to the power of 3, remember it can be written as x times y times y times y. That's it written as a product of factors over 2 times y. What we're looking for here is something to divide the top and the bottom of the fraction by. Seeing as they both have factors of y, we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by y. This would leave us with our simplified fraction of x times y times y over 2. Or to neaten that up a wee bit, we can write it as it started off as a y times y gives us a y squared, so we have xy squared over 2. And that's that fraction simplified. Again, write this into your notes, Jotter, please.
Here are some further examples for you then. So the first one, we have x over 5x. So what you'll see here is that we have an x as a factor on the numerator and the denominator. So we can divide by x on the numerator and divide by x on the denominator. x divided by x would leave us with 1, and 5x divided by x would leave us with 5. And it's simplified. For the second one, we have ab squared over b. So this ab squared can be written as a times b times b, all over b. So you can identify that both of these will divide by b. If we divide b squared by b, that just leaves it with a b on its own. So on the numerator, we'll have ab. If we divide the denominator by b, b divided by b leaves with 1. And ab over 1 is just ab. For number 3, we have x squared y squared over xy. So x squared y squared is a product of x times x times y times y. And the denominator xy is x times y. So we have two factors that are common here. We've got an x and we've got a y. So for both of these, we can divide by x and we can divide by y, or simply just xy. So if we divide x squared y squared by xy, that leaves us with xy. If we divide xy by xy, again that leaves us with 1. And xy divided by 1 is simply xy. For number 4, 3x squared y squared z divided by 18xz. Well, there's a couple of things that are common to both the numerator and the denominator this time. First of all, let's look at the numbers. We've got 3 and 18. The highest common factor we can take out of those is 3. So we can divide both by 3. But then we also have an x squared and an x. So that means that we can divide both of those by an x. We don't have a y on the denominator, so we can't divide by y. But we've got a z that appears on both the numerator and the denominator. So again, we can divide by z. So what that would leave you with... The 3 and the 3 will cancel. The x squared and the x will just leave you with x. y squared is as it is, and then the z cancel off. This is then over 18 divided by 3, which is 6. x and z both cancel, so we're left with xy squared over 6. For number 5, we have y minus 1 over y minus 1 all cubed. Now this can be written as y minus 1 over y minus 1 times y minus 1 times y minus 1. So write it as a product of factors. You can see here that both of these will divide by one of those factors of y minus 1. So on the numerator, if we divide by y minus 1, we're left with 1. On the denominator, dividing by y minus 1, where we simply just have y minus 1, all squared. And the last one, 2a plus 3 all squared, over 2a plus 3, 2a plus 1. Well, that's 2a plus 3 all squared. Again, we can expand that out to be 2a plus 3 times 2a plus 3 which is all divided by 2a plus 3, 2a plus 1. Do you see the product of factors here? We can divide the numerator and the denominator by a 2a plus 3. So we're left with a simplified fraction of 2a plus 3 over 2a plus 1. Make sure you have these examples copied into your notes jotter so that you can refer back to them. Okay, just one last point, and that is to remember that fractions must be reduced to their simplest form. So if you're working with a fraction, you must make sure that you find a ha the highest common factor of the numerator and the denominator to reduce it to its simplest form. Before you attend your next class, make sure you have tried the following questions to practice this skill. <laughs>